Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson, and this is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. And tonight we will be reviewing this, um, um, I guess I would call it a, a pop culture classic. It's not a pop culture classic. Well, it is a pop culture. It no, is. it's not. <laughs> Why not? It's a sci-fi romance. Okay, it's a sci-fi romance um, called Starman that was released in 1984. Yes. And it's an awesome movie, and it, it's quite different from other sci-fis I've watched. Well, it's, it's more of a drama than a sci-fi. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's a sci-fi, obviously. That's an that's underlying theme, but the main part is a drama uh, between the uh, two main stars. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yes. I think it's how, I think they intended it that way. Because mm. all those other, I think ET came out about the same time as some well, other movies. Well, actually, it came out. Um, the movie was released about two and a half years after yeah. Stephen King's, e, you know, it. Yeah. I mean, um, ET movie. Yeah, yeah. Stephen King? I'm not Stephen King. I'm Steven St- Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I got the names mixed Stephen up. Stephen King is good, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, but, that's... But, but there was a lot of sci fis going on around there, so I think they changed it uh, because, um, yeah, it was similar to the E.T. script. Yeah. From Alien it, and Want to Go Home and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah it yeah. has a lot of similar mm. things in yeah, common. Yeah. And it's... Um, t- and it, Sim- Let me see. What was the other alien movie watched that deals with um, aliens coming down to, um, well, th- well, the other alien movie I'm referring to is the one about um, that deals with an alien coming to the Earth to pregnant a lady to impregnate to mm-hmm. in hopes of helping his race. Yes. I can't remember the, the name. He couldn't present. get a date in his own planet, so he came down here. Okay, of course right. not. <laughs> so anyway, um, just um, after this movie was released, they made a TV series. I don't know uh, how it short, went. It was a short run. Yeah, it was only one season. It wasn't very good by the sounds of it. it by well, the sounds of it, didn't it didn't pan out. No. Anyway, here we go. Produced by Larry Franco. Directed by one of our favourite guys, Johnny Carpenter. Yay. Yeah, John Carpenter, not a bad director. Yeah, as you guys are well, well aware, he's did the, ha- the first Halloween. And let me see, he's done The Thing. Um, the, the Kurt Russell one? Yeah. yeah. And let me see, the he did They Live, another sci-fi, I should mention. Yeah. And a number, and a number of other mm. movies that are really awesome to boot. Yeah, he does a few things. Anyway, moving right along. Uh, written by Bruce Evans, Reynold Gideon, and Dean Reisner. Now, Dean Reisner came in to do some rewrites at the end of the process before going into production. I don't know if he was credited to it in the uh, in the credits, mm. but he came to, and because he didn't contribute to over over fifty percent of the. Uh, Script, he wasn't deemed to be a script writer on that project. Oh, that yeah, makes so sense. So he just tweaked it a bit. So mm. shame, but he he he, he put a, put possibly put the breath of life into it. Mm, true. Moving right along, uh, budget twenty four million, only made box office at twenty nine, and I think the main problem was there's too many other sci fi's and things going on at the same time, mm. and it didn't have the action that people were looking for. So uh, well, uh, it wasn't meant to be an action. Oh, yeah, but so people, as soon as people see sci fi, they expect sci fi. They expect Star Wars. They expect Battlestar E.T. Galactica. They expect, they expect all the stuff and Star Trek, but, obviously. But Star Trek, but this was a drama, mm. a sci fi theme. So it was, yeah. It didn't, it didn't have enough um, mm. interest for some people. This is another mm. interesting thing, is guys that this was composed by not not John Carpenter, as I'm aware or aware. It was done. The music was done by a different um, different composer at yeah, the time. Yeah, I, I didn't write that down. No, I don't worry. I don't care about the music. So this much. is probably one of many films that he didn't um, take part in yeah. the. Um, um, music. music side. Well, it wasn't his production anyway, so he was, he was only the director. Mm. So, yeah, if he was producer, he could have, he may have. Mm. Anyway, moving right along again. Um, stars. Aha. Jeff Bridges, he plays Scott Hayden, stroke Starman. Mm. We'll, all will be told later on. Um, yeah. Now, he was in Tron two years earlier. Mm. That's uh, another sci-fi. Should we be uh, yeah. looking at reviewing in the uh, near again, future? And, and it gets, you know, it gets back. Like I said, there's a lot of good sci-fi type movies around that period, and this one probably didn't hold up too good as a sci-fi. Might have been, if they marketed it as a drama, mm. it might have done better. But anyway, irrespective. 
Karen Allen plays Denny Hayden from Raiders of the Lost Ark, and that was about three years earlier. Now, that wasn't mm. sci-fi or anything, but it, that was the first time I saw Karen, I thought she was a good, a good actress. Mm. Pretty. Charles Martin Smith. A mouthful, isn't it? Well, Charles Smith, Chucky Smith. I think Charles Martin Smith sounds better. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, plays Mark Sherman. He's um, a member of a group called SETI. Uh, search for extraterrestrial intelligence yeah. or something like that. So he and a, a number of other people are trying to find the alien and try to and figure pretty, out yeah, why, and why pr- is he oh, doing yeah, well, it His here. group is trying to prove the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence. Yeah. And he's called in to assist because the government thinks, oh, we might have a UFO landing, so he's yeah. dr- drawn into it. Mm. But I won't, I won't say too much. That'll, that'll be developed in the um, story. And Richard Jekyll, I think it's the right pronounce of his name, he plays George Fox. He's yeah, well, a government hobnob guy who yeah. or he just wants to get the alien and vivisect him and, yeah, yeah, well, Mark, and see what makes him tick. Well, Mark's chari- Mark, the character, is... Um, um, He's more interested in the alien's intelligence. Yes. While might, this guy, yeah. on the other hand, he's more interested in yeah, dissecting that's him. That's going to come out in the story. I know. That's why I didn't say anything. And he, okay. he didn't really care. He's pretty much a, a no-brainer, that character. I know. But that's I gonna, mean, the George gonna character, I mean. You're going to tell the story in a minute. You're going to tell him all about that. That's why I didn't mention anything. I know. Anything, I'm okay. just saying to yes. you guys that the character George... Fox, he's a total no-brainer. He's okay. a paperweight, if you will. He, he's not paperweight. He doesn't. I, um, his his knowledge of of is mostly care. shoot first and ask, ask questions, questions later. later. And that was probably one of the things in the movie they they suppressed a bit because that was uh, originally I thought there, there was a bit more political innuendo in the movie which they suppressed a little bit. I think. Mm. Anyway, sorry. Uh, I'll give a quick overview while while I'm here because I want to roll into something. Me too. Um, Story about uh, a non-corporal alien. I go that that's a body, an alien without a body, uh, named Starman, who has come to Earth, and he cloned himself into the body of uh, this lady's dead husband using some DNA off a hair strand. Anyway, mm. he came because he was invited. Voyager Two space probe was set up into space with a gold record. Uh, welcoming, welcoming an alien life form, whoever found it, uh, to come visit Earth. And he came to visit Earth as a reconnaissance mission to find out what Earth people were really like. And when he gets here, he finds out we're a hostile bunch of no, no, no good people. And he, and he reports back to his people in the first part of the movie saying, these aren't very nice people. So, um, anyway, the film received positive reviews, surprisingly. Hooray. No, but the point is it didn't box office. Like I said, I think it's a case that uh, I didn't pull the right market. Um, anyway, it fell in the box office. Uh, Bridges was nominated for an Academy Award for the Best Actor. Sweet. And it, for the role. Uh, and it inspired a short-lived uh, TV series of the same name in yuck. two years later. As so I said, It didn't yuck. go very good, I don't believe. Yeah, I think it's... Be- mm. I think... People disappointed that Jeff was not going to be in it because in this one they used a different actor who, and they given a good explanation of why he's diff, having a different body. That yeah, well, new just, DNA. Well, they, yada, did the, yada. they did the same thing with Blade Runner. They had a Blade Runner t- TV series, I think. Mm. I think they did. I'm, go on, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, uh, and, and they had different people in it, and it just wasn't the same. But Michael York, not Blade Runner, um, Logan Shaw, I mean. Like, well, I say Blade Runner, Logan's Blade. Run, Logan's Run TV series, and they had, so Michael York made the role. He, he, he was the guy, you know, Logan's mm-hmm. Run, he was Logan. And when you take that and take, put somebody else in and a different leading lady and, and a different storyline. And, and different storylines, whatever, it's, it, it just loses something, so yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to pass it over to Sarah. I can't think of anything yeah. else. I will just jump in occasionally with a comment. Yeah, as so, usual. Um, so it opens with um, outer space and the special um, s- um, spaceship that Mike mentioned. The Voyager 2 space probe. Yeah, arrives at this unknown place and it with, has a record on board, a very, like, the size of a... It's of an old a- a 33 and a third album. Yeah, back, only it's going back to old technology. Yeah, and it has a sort of many languages, Saying including greetings to it from planet Earth. Yada yada yada. Yeah, to any one alien species that may want to learn the English language and we wish and, to yeah, visit. And, and gave a, a smattering of other words, about a hundred words, yeah. to get 
by with some basic language. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. one of the um, messages in the vid- on the record said, um, "Feel free to come visit." Yeah, us. yeah. So and saying greetings, not yeah, to greetings. The whoever listening. Oh. Anyway, moving on. So we watch, we flash forward, and the one of the aliens from that planet um, arrives. On Earth, and the army thinks it's an um, enemy spacecraft or, or or ship, anyway. And they shoot it out of the sky. Yeah. Again. Yes. Did they try to communicate with it? No. Not that we're aware of. No. Or mm, anyway. Funny that. Hey? Funny that. Anyway. Um. Meanwhile, while this is happening, um, Jenny Hayden, if that's her name. Yeah, Hayden. Yeah. She's mourning over the loss of her husband for the last few months. I think. Oh yeah. Or oh, whatever. Yeah. And he passed away yeah, in an accident. In an accident, Shame. a painting accident, I think it was. Painting fell off the scaffold. Yeah, or something he or fell off the ladder, ladder or, and yeah. had himself killed. Mm. Anyway, she's very sad, and she's mourning. And we watching old recorded footage of her husband. In the olden days of uh, Super Eight films, yeah, yeah, mm. everyone had a projector back in those days. <laughs> yeah, so she turns in feeling after drinking so much wine or beer or whatever. Not very good for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As soon as the, alone, the spaceship dangerous. crashes not too far from her house, and we watch as a bit of a point of view shot of the alien in a weird glowy light. Yeah, he's thing. an orb. He's a light, a light, uh, a, a, like a swamp gas light. Yeah, you know, something like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, just a little orb of light coming across the water to her house and getting closer and closer and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and he as he gets closer, he um, he oh, he then. Spots um, a photo album of, and there are a few photos of, of Got Jenny Hayden's um, husband, um, Scott, mm. and she even sees a few sm- hairs of his hair. And he, wouldn't it have been funny if it was dog hair? Good point. Ah, but imagine what would you look like then? Yeah, <laughs> he then um, scans it with his. T- his his powers. However, and, he did it, mm-hmm. and it goes into details like like literally science. Oh, stuff. And they zoomed in really great to uh, subatomic sub- subatomic uh, views. It looked like the universe and stuff down yeah. there. Not Ooh. bad. Good good CGI. Would it have been CGI back in those days? I don't know if it's it CGI really or graphics. Yeah, it looked really good. Anyway, mm. it looks pretty good. Mm. Anyway, Jenny wakes. T- from the hearing um, a weird noise in her and bedroom, and some light coming and out of her. She then room. sees an <laughs> infant um, in her on in the lounge room, and then it grows a into a child. toddler, yeah. and then it grows into a, a child over and, several minutes, and then it grows mm. into a teen, and then it grows into an adult, complete adulthood. Scott, with every bit intact, yeah. naked though. So she can make sure everything was intact. Yeah, mm. and she's surprised to see him because, and as he approaches, she takes out, tries to take out a gun, but uh, but she's so nerve wracked she faints. Well, it looks like a dead husband. Now, what do you do? I don't know. He then looks at some of her belongings, looks at a gun, and he also put, turns on the projector thing and sees himself on there and it's sees herself on there too. Possibly. And he realises, oh, they know each other. Mm. And he sees Scott shooting a pistol. Yeah. Shooting beer bottles or something or other. And he yeah. realises what the gun's capable of. Ah, yeah. Ah. Ah, uh-huh. ah. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, um, Jenny Wakes revives eventually while the alien is... T- he takes out these special spheres. spheres. Yeah, little silver spheres. He's only got a handful of about seven yeah. or eight of them. One yeah. of them he takes out and sends a message to his people Same. to say Don't that come. This is a, a bunch of wankers down here. They were nasty and horrible and vicious. Yeah, and, and he tells them that he's going to go to a special place in Arizona where a meteorite... Yeah, sh- at, yeah at the moment he's in Wisconsin, wherever that is. Yeah. Uh, that could be several states away or across country or something. Yeah, yeah. so... Mm. I don't know American... So... Yeah, so he sends geography. a message mm. to them and tells them that he'll be there in three days or four days, I'm not sure. Something like that. Anyway, while this mm. is happening, Jenny tries to make her get away, but eventually he catches up to her, and they soon drive cross-country across to to the... Where to, uh, to Arizona. Uh, 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 to with Arizona. <laughs> Arizona. All, along the way, she's scared and, f- and freaked out, and... 
at soon enough, a f- a cu- after a couple of hours, she eventually sees that he's not as bad an alien as people it, make yeah, out. Yeah, as the trip progresses over the ensuing days, she starts to see him, I'm going to use the word, his human side. Yeah. There is because a s- he is a, they, they do have a nice side to them, but they do not, they're very unemotional. They don't yeah. understand human emotions. Yeah, there was, one, to learn. There yeah. was one scene where hmm. um, he is looking over a, a dead deer and that was shot by a hunter, and he kind of revived it using one of the um, sphere things. He brought things. it back to life. Yeah, it didn't revive it. It was dead. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah of course. Creepy. He, of course, he meets other hostile um, beings, like the hunter who wanted to know where he, his deer went to. He just said it went, went, out, went in the woods over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, he didn't believe him, obviously. He was dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if he, if he bothered looking, the guy was standing next to his car, <laughs> and the deer was there a couple of moments earlier, and then the deer wasn't there. What did he do? He shoved him in his bloody pocket? How mm-hmm. stupid is this hunter? Yeah. I don't know. He was really dumb. Anyway, so moving on. Um, he also enjoys some of the food. He enjoys the um, apple pie oh, he's stuff. Done, he, he's never eaten human type food before and so the taste sensations are all new yeah can you yeah. imagine guys um if you guys were an alien and never actually tasted food you go first... into maccas and say mm, mm, french fries nuggets i'll have a big mac oh yeah, mike but... don't do that well, I'll I remember on diet. i'm on a diet and i rather not get so off my diet. Been on a diet for the past three three and a half months uh five or four months no, four but four months maybe uh, and you've lost about 22 kilos. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Anyone can do it if she can. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving on. Moving on. So, anyway, while this is happening, um, our scientist guy, um, Mark and George, they try to figure out why, this a- why is this alien here. And there was a few um, complaints from other people saying that this alien was very hostile, like to s- some people. And some people... They were lying. Yeah. He's being attacked, uh, ag- but people being aggressive towards him. Of course, he's going to retaliate to protect himself. Yeah, yeah. People vent- lie. Yeah. True, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like two col- policemen while they're tracking um, our alien and Jenny, they thought they would like to be heroes by tr- trying to make themselves look impressive by, by. We're going to arrest this guy. Yeah, they by hacking or not hacking. I mean, huh? um, um. Breaking into um, the, 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 their, their car. car for gosh knows reasons. Which is no real reason. They said keep him under surveillance, don't approach him. So they stand there breaking yeah. into his car. What has that got to... What's that They would have been better do? breaking into the motel room. Aha. Mm, uh-huh. I, I would have thought they would have probably go up to the room and then um, rat tat tat on the door and... Yeah, room service. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Hello. I don't know why the yeah. significance of opening, trying to open pry open the um they're trying the to room. show the arrogance of the police force I all know. these all these two police people not police but, force per se I know. but these two police officers who want to top note themselves say we're going to arrest this guy we're just looking, looking for yeah. some reasons there might be uh, firearms drugs yeah. something or other we'll find a good reason to arrest him yeah, Whatever. S- yeah. soon enough mm. um a few of pe- locals at the hotel help them out by knocking over a few coke uh, machines coke and machines and what then- a waste of good coke hey sarah mm. Quite right. <laughs> anyway, our hero, our alien and and Jenny, they get into the car and they race away. And while they're driving, he tries to take out the gun that he that Jenny had earlier. But she tries to fight him, tells him, "No, don't use gun. It could be bad." Yeah. And, and then, then suddenly, one of the policemen then sh- accidentally shoots well, Jenny. He shot Jenny. Yeah. I mean, and, there's, and there's a police barricade, I think, up ahead, and he then drives head on into the big a tank. A big gas tr- tanker there. But he t- and just before he did, he took it on his little silver spheres and did something with it so they wouldn't get blown up or incinerated. So the car died, hmm. and then he walked out the flames on the other side carrying her limp body because obviously she was dying or dead. Yeah. He, they they hmm. soon arrive in a... Um, he, they, he soon has them at her in a um, one of those moving housing big, vans. What are they called? There's a low loader truck there mm. uh, with a big uh, relocable home on it. Yeah, so <laughs> it's one of those things. 
Anyway, he then takes out his severe. I think he had two left, I think, I remember. Mm. And a few he, left, yeah. Yeah, I think he had two left. Sorry, yeah, folks. Maybe two, maybe two, yeah. Yeah, so he takes one out and he slowly um, brings her back to life and health. Yeah. Anyway, she soon uh. revives and he's gone. And she then, she's at a sort of another um, what do they call it? Um, rest stop, I think it was called. Yeah, uh, yeah, your rest stop, your yeah, cafe, you know. Yeah, yeah, a re- rest stop. And she asked one of the people there if where, um, if where that the um alien guy's gone to. Well, not in those terms. Didn't so. say alien guy. She of course not. <laughs> of course, they said that he left with um one of their chefs. Yeah, the chef was just finished his, his shift, so yeah. he. Put- so he hits the ride. She then um, co- goes to the pl- to the phone and tells, talks to um, Mark, you know, about the guy from City. Yeah, to th- tell him that he, that it was not a kidnapping and that and he, she doesn't want to press charges. And he or just wants to like go that. home and stuff. Or yeah. he's, he's, he's pleading his case, and that's not the Stockholm theory. Yeah, so, uh, theory, to be- theory or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So he has not fallen in love for a abductor. <laughs> well. That's that's not to be not per se no per yeah, se, yeah. yeah but it's she was never in any harm yeah true yeah, anyway so. um she then asks one request asks one of the um guys the motorists if they could give her a lift to wherever the alien guy was going there's a young guy with a little hot up rod the hot yeah car, an yeah. awesome car it's really fast and I imagine if there are probably a few out there still oh yeah. Is that- my brother used to have a hot up car years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so soon enough, there's another police barricade where, you know, they check sort of like, a lot like what we're going through with the COVID, <sighs> where we are checking people to see if they're we might, okay. They might, might, they might not be doing it in America. Mm, I know. Hello. Okay, but they this might is... not be doing it in India. Hello. Will you zip it? We do it here. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so they're doing this barricade thing, and they're... Getting people out of their cars to check them out, you know, check out if you've yeah. seen this man, yada, yada, yada. And they had a photograph of him, of course, they actually went on and found out Denny Hayden's husband had been sighted, considering he's been dead for a year or yeah, so. Yeah, see, they uh, found out that yeah. that that from from the scientist guy, that this guy took on the the appearance oh, of... A dead man. A dead man. So they had a picture of him off, and, his, uh, off the government files. Yeah, and George uh, Fox, being the idiot, keeps... Ask these guys, is it possible for us to do it? And of what? course, Mark says, "Not in our time. We're still, we're still in the, we're still the ancients compared yeah, yeah, to the yeah, alien yeah. guys." We're idiots. Going yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred thousand years ahead of us. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Quite right. So anyway, while they're during the Pirelli's barricade, whatever, um, Jenny tells the her driver to distract. The guard, the um, um, um the guys, the army and police guys, yeah, yeah, the, the, while the she guys, but... um tries to sneak a- the alien away. Yeah, quite and funny. The... He gets a big container of petrol mm-hmm. and a rag, and it, just like a, a big Molotov cocktail. Yeah, yeah, and throws it, and boom, wolf, and everyone comes running down there, and they 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 go and the chase after that uh, guy. He stops the side of the road there in a low area, and they just sneak through, and no one bothers looking. I could, I saw them. Mm, yeah, <laughs> so she sneaks away with her alien friend, and they embrace for a few seconds, saying how uh, much she she was worried about him. And they then take another um, get hitch another ride with a bunch of people in a truck, and yeah, some Indian she, Indian folk, I think. Yeah. yeah, and they head off to to wherever they need to go. Well, they're heading to where were they heading to? Whatever. Arizona. I know they head to Arizona, but that's good. In whatever area, and they got onto it, and ended up uh, getting onto a train after, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, before that, we get to that. We, um, he, they talk about, um, at the time they were in the car. He, she says that how much she didn't, she missed him, and how she didn't want to say goodbye to him, and he still doesn't understand some of the um, vocabulary. In, words we often say like in, like goodbye and love and stuff, stuff like that. Right. Mm-hmm. He then even noticed um, one of the the ladies, uh, you know, in the truck At having home. a baby, oh, yeah. and and he asked about 
the um, babies and reproducing stuff like that, and he understands how it works and stuff like yeah, that. He understands biologically. He's not and stupid. Yeah. He wonders why Jenny doesn't have a child. He said she couldn't have one. She was infertile. Hmm. One of those oh. ones, unlucky women. Or she, what she quotes, I know she's saying that sarcastically. She said, "I'm one of the lucky ones who can't have a baby." Yeah. She didn't actually mean lucky. She meant like, yeah, she's yeah. just been cynical. Yeah. Soon yeah. enough, they arrive at the train station. They get on there, and he's developing a bit of a chill because it's raining. It's always been raining, yeah. And she undoes his clothes and puts the blanket around him, and they begin to, you know, do. And he what starts it. to take her clothes off, and needless to say, it's enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Say yeah. no more. Yeah. <laughs> Later on, when after she slept a bit, she then r- wakes up and he tells her the good news that he gave her a child tonight. And she said, that's impossible, I'm infertile. He said, yeah. it doesn't matter, I gave you a baby. Yeah, and he says that, mm. believe me, it's it's going to be a human baby. And, a little boy. A little, yeah, boy. A little boy. And and he will be both Scott, her husband. Because he had and, Scott's DNA. And mm-hmm. yeah. his and the star man's baby. And, and he'll know everything the star man knows. Yeah. He'll be very smart, wise. He'll be a teacher. Yeah, a spiritual teacher maybe. No, I don't know, just teacher. So he might be very learned and be able to moral teachings as well as scientific teachings. Mm, you know. Maybe. Mm. I like to think it would be something I think good. I like to think it's both. I think so. Yeah. yeah, we can visit the stars and then we do the Star Trek and Star Wars and yeah. stuff. Yeah, anyway, yeah. she's. he then says, if you don't want this baby, uh, I can I'll terminate it. for you. But she is more than thrilled and she says to him, where's your star? And he asks why. Because she wants to point it out to her child when he's older. Older. Eventually, he does point at one of them, and then he says, "No, that's, it. No, that's not it." And then <laughs> he, he points. He's not very smart. To, doesn't know where he came from. Yeah. Oh, well, he then you know. points at a bluish, whitish star. A, 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 a blinking one. That's like blinking. a pulsar or something. I think. Yeah. Or, I don't know. Yeah. And eventually, they soon arrive in Las Vegas. Yeah, they overshot their uh, train stop. They they need to stop at some place. Mm. I can't remember the name of it now. But they overshot it by about 300 miles. Yeah, so they shot yeah. too far from where they need to go to. Yeah. So soon enough, they arrive in um, in the middle Vegas. of Las Vegas. And they she tries to work out how they're going to get... Yeah, she, she lost the purse. Right. She misplaced. It could, ca- it could have been in the car. Yeah, when they blow it up. Yeah, yeah. So they only had a couple of coins in the pocket. Yeah. It? So and they have a little less money on them at the yeah. moment. And a couple of quarters or something or other. And he says, oh, that's all we need. And he walked up to a... Ga- he saw the gambling machines. And he said, oh, I can make this work. And so he walked up to a, yeah. a poke machine, or whatever you call them, in yeah. America, a slot machine. And he put one coin in. And they got it there. And the three, two bars showed up, one above. And he just put his finger on it and it dropped down. And they got some money. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes to one that's a bigger, the bigger multi jack for about half a million dollars. He yeah. put one of the coins there and won that as well. Yeah. Hey, I want that guy on my, on my team. He's really good. Yeah. <laughs> and soon that they buy an awesome, nice yeah, car. Yeah, really nice car. You know. Yeah. yeah. And no then reading. they yeah. then they head off down the, to the the next. Yeah. Plot, some, the next there's place. some supposed to be some crater. It could be a real, real crater. I, I don't think know. it could be a real yeah. crater. I mean, I don't think it's made up. Well, it looked like big hole in the ground. It looked around like a crater. It could have been a, a real site somewhere. I mean, in, I think Mike, area. you said it yourself that there might have been well, we hit, we, a real the, cr- the planet crater. Earth has been hit by med- big meteors over the years. That's what caused the ice age, supposedly. Mm. Uh, it would do a great big meteor hit the uh, hit the Earth, and all this dust and dirt went up in the sky yeah. for so many years. Mm. And uh, killed all the foliage off, or most of it, and all the herb, herbivore dinosaurs okay, died, okay. and the, the Mike, metasauruses Mike, could have nothing Mike. to eat. And um, I don't think we want to hear a history lesson. And the bunny rabbits died, and uh, oh, sorry, but, we maybe. don't want to hear a history lesson. Uh, uh, so how anyway, do we our, no. so our heroes continue on, and they eventually arrive at another stop where they got some. Um, Cherry cobbler, if that's the word. Oh, so cherry, cherry, whatever cherry cobbler is. It looks like some sort of a creamy dessert with yeah. a pastry maybe on the yeah. side with cherries in it. I yeah. think, I don't know. It could and be something like a tart they, maybe. As they are eating, she is um, talking, tell, asks them if there is a way for him to stay. And she, she also kind of conceals a wish that she, or just says, I just wish 
but she doesn't have time to finish the sentence because soon enough the police patrol or yeah, her guys arrive. Yeah, police patrolman. Mm. Police patrolman comes in. Yeah, yeah. and mm. so the oh. pl- the military guys have catched up with them, and now Mark arrives too. He then talk decides to talk to the man before because he found out much later on. That George and his crew One are going to slice and dice him. Yeah, mm. slice the um, alien and find out how he ticks. Considering he's a human being like us. Yeah, exactly. He's just a human being. I mean, if yeah. they slice and dice and he has yeah. everything organ wise, stuff like that, you may not even find the alien within his body. He, he won't. Actually, it's really funny that he said the body's dying. Mm hmm. Now, does that mean his life force would die too? Because it's only a vehicle for his life force. Mm, Don't know. True. Interesting. It's just like um, mm. his alien is like a spirit or something. Yeah. Which makes me Don't wonder know. that. Didn't no. quite come out in the movie. So I'm dying. The, he said, I'm dying. Not that I'm believing yeah. in Scientology or anything, guys. No, I just, I'm just saying it as a fantasy case that maybe these aliens are like spirit creatures. I, like. Well, well, the light, they're energy beings yeah. or whatever. But when... So once he took on a, a human DNA, maybe he got locked to that DNA, hmm. uh, and he was dying with the with the DNA of the body. Yeah, I yeah, still yeah. don't understand in the TV series why he was able to maintain a body in that same time. Oh, I don't know. I don't he, know he, care. he went back into a little ball and dropped this there, got somebody else's DNA or something. A little bit like Dark City. You know, they, it just doesn't make sense yeah, in, that, in the TV series. Stuff. It just didn't make Who sense knows? to me in the TV series why they nah. gave him a well, longer life stand. Well, I didn't see the TV series, so I don't know. Okay, moving on. So Mark asks him why he's come to this planet of all planets, and Mark's and the alien says that he that. The their species find humans really interesting. That See? they in, like the fact that they they're very they're both a mixture of violent and very and other stuff. Yeah. While he says that of, there are other creatures that he is aware of that are more violent and ferocious. He describes. Yeah, yeah. A lot different from from humans. Yeah. Somewhat. And, and he says. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jenny t- tries to plead with Mark, saying that the Starman alien is going to die, and if he doesn't get to this site, um, his body will d- just will die. die. He, looked at him. he was he wasn't looking real good, but yeah. you know, he could have been worn out. I mean, the filming schedule could have been horrendous. Yeah. yeah. So Mark um, tells some of the guys that are present that these were not the couple and, and to lied. let them go. So they head off and they then, the the George Fox guy arrives and he's like real angry that Mark has just li- has lied through his teeth and let these people go. Yeah. Eventually we arrive at the crater and the military guys are there. They start firing um, full cylinders on the yeah, arc yeah, young they, people. They, they have these helicopters and stuff. So you have... You have a, battle guns off them, shooting at these two unarmed people, and then a little bit of overkill. I agree, Mike, I agree. Uh, I it's, mean, a, it's a bit overkill when yeah, you think about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're going to kill an innocent lady, yeah. as well as the alien, who yeah. was unarmed. Well, actually, I think they were firing, I think the word I would say... It wasn't warning shots, they just kept missing well, them. Well, they kept okay. shooting around them. Which of course, could... that's our aiming towards them, and that's as close, they're not that accurate, Okay. Yeah, anyway, so eventually this very large sphere-type shaped spaceship arrives yeah. and it comes down near the meteorite and all of the witnesses stop firing and just watch. And, and all the helicopters landed for some reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like to think it has something to do with the aliens. The aliens I think. might have done something. Oh, who yeah. knows? And, and the alien is finally regains his strength for either well, a, yeah, when he a got, few minutes. Got, when he got in the shade of the his mother's ship, he got some energy back there yeah. because he was in yeah. his home virtually. Yeah, yeah. and he mm. says that he must go, and Jenny asks to go with him, but he says that if she, yeah. she, if she goes, she'll die up there. With, and she yeah. says she doesn't care, but he says he cares. So he's learning human emotion. Yeah, ah. and he says to ask her, um, how do you say goodbye? And he and she says, "Kiss me and uh, say I love you." All that stuff, and he, which he does. He does. He's a nice alien. Ooh. Yeah, and as they're embracing, he says, 
tell the baby about me, even though the baby will know of him eventually. Something like that, yes. And he gives her the, his final his last silver, silver sphere orb and sphere, tells her yeah. that this will, this, the baby will know what to do with yeah, this. Yeah, so when he gets bold, he give him to him, put in his hand, and all he will know what to do, yeah. yeah. So maybe it's yeah, open up his mind. Yeah, so mm. he then slowly walks away, mm. and we watch as the alien and his spaceship Descend into space or whatever, and mm. the end. Yay! And I gotta admit, guys, I do like this movie. Look, it's quite different from all a lot of sci-fi movies I've seen. And look, it's not a standard sci-fi. It's mm. a drama with sci-fi in it. Yeah, and I think it's really yeah. touching. So you're not you don't have aliens running around with blasters and different things, and and yeah, you know, and monstrous looking aliens chasing chasing somebody. You know, no, no, mm. it's it's a drama based on Earth. Um, yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, it's quite good, actually. It's a drama, though. It's not a strict sci-fi that people anticipate. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a, bit, a, bit, a bit like Close Encounters of the Third Kind. A, that was a sci-fi that Spielberg did, but it was more of a drama mm. than a sci-fi. Yes, an alien spaceship came down, yada, yada, but it was an Earth drama waiting to hear from the aliens. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Mm. Yeah, anyway, I do enjoy it, and I like yeah. the fact that it dealt with how, um, like, I think I remember a, qu- a, qu- a quote in this movie where um, one of the, um, w- where George Fox says um, about a missionary getting eaten by cannibals and then Mark says, which are, are we? Are we the, uh, mis- uh, the missionary or the cannibals? Exactly. S- hint, hint is maybe that <laughs> the alien might be a messenger of peace. Or- yeah, he was. That's what he wanted. He wanted to check us out and find out and be report back to his people saying, they're nasty, horrible people are going to kill us if we come down here. So, yeah. yeah, and yeah. I think yeah. he learnt a lot, like, learnt that from Jenny and other that other people are not as hostile or bad, mm-hmm. or provided that they don't, aren't aware that he's an alien or not. <laughs> yeah. Well. Anyway, rolling right along. Okay, there's a bit of production notes here, guys. Uh, Starman yeah. spent five years in development. Five years, huh? Five years. That's yeah, a long. Yeah, five years. Um... It was now the original script by Bruce Evans and uh, Reynold Gideon was purchased by the studio at the urging of the executive producer Michael Douglas shortly before it optioned Steven Spielberg's Night Skies. Now, Night Skies, I believe, became ET. Oh, cool. Uh-huh, so, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of things happening that time around that time. Sci fi is very popular. Yeah, well, yeah. after mm. you, Star Wars and Star Trek came out. And Tron and, again, tr- different things. Well, I just meant those ones yeah, because before any- that, sci fi was like, like a, it was a. It was not done cr- either. All the old sci fis during the 50s and early 60s, it was okay, enough done, cardboard cutouts, fairy lights, whatever. Let's move on to something. And Robbie then, the Robot. Yeah, bop, and that bop, sort bop, of stuff. Rob, you got old Robbie the Robot. I liked him. Uh, and people said, oh, people are tired of sci fis until George Lucas came along yeah. and proved them wrong. Yeah, <laughs> so, sci fi is not gone from the minds no, of people. It just had to be reinterpreted and yeah. reinvented. Um, yeah. Reinvent the wheel, if you uh, will. Yeah, well, yeah, because, I mean, they had, had to go... See, Doctor Who started off really, really basic. Mm-hmm. Now, some American people might watch Doctor Who, I don't know. Uh, but Doctor Who started off, it was really, really bad props and bad scenery and stuff. It was almost like cardboard cutouts and, and fairy lights and stuff. It was pathetic. But as, mm. as it became popular, it got better mm. and better and better. Mm. We could have to meet the demands of the uh, public. Hmm. Yeah, so now so I believe it's really good. If it wasn't for dear old George or hmm. and Star Trek, um, sci-fi would have been either not accepted in the world, or maybe um, one of many of those other sci-fi's well, may get accepted and may have been the thing gone. Is, if George Lucas proven didn't have Star right. Wars, the New Hope, whatever, come out back in whatever year it was, um, if that didn't come out, would that have opened the door for the other guys? to do the other sci-fi movies? Good That's point. a very good question. And it's um, a good question. Hmm. I mean, it's the same, I guess, with George A. Romero's work when um, when he was doing zombies and while people thought um, zombies 
there's nothing you can else you can do with zombies because yeah. because everyone knows voodoo's and yeah. stuff and like so that. They, they decided to change it to an epidemic instead yeah, of yeah, a viral thing, radiation, something from space, whatever. And, yeah, and George Romero so, and Reanimator. Yeah, so and, yeah, all those thanks good to these guys, yeah, they yeah. kind of changed the game for us and yeah. changed our way of thinking. World War Z. I love to do World War Z, but she went to review it with Oh, me. Mike. <laughs> Mike, give him a break. <laughs> but the point is, the, the, the zombie apocalypses, they're mm. great, but they're just taking it to the next level. So we we'll get we we'll left the voodoo behind and we've got another reason for it. Yeah. Fun. And it's believable too. And, yeah, well, sort of, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, like, I've, I've often said to Sarah about good movies. Even in fiction and fantasy, there has to be an element of reality. And as soon as it's, you see reality sneaks in, all things are possible. So true. And that scares the crap out of you. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things I like about these yeah. um these. So whether it's a movies. sci-fi or a horror movie or a fantasy. You get a sense of reality, say this could happen, yeah, and then you go, Ooh. yeah, it's just Ew. like, yeah, yeah, I, I like how they these guys interpret the mm, um yeah. their vision when you think about it, yeah. Anyway, moving on. So, um, the interesting thing is this is not uh, just John Carpenter's only sci-fi movie. He did a few more in his directing career. Um, he did um, the Thing, which was um, a remake of the, the one years from years yeah, ago. Yeah, the early one. I, that, I like the early one. It's yeah. this one was made in nineteen eighty two. Yeah, there wasn't there three of those. Yeah, there were there three. There was the early one, mm-hmm. and there's that one, and there's another one with I can't remember exactly. Yeah, well, I don't know the um, film director for it yet. Yeah. Mm. And they made he made the They Live, which was done in nineteen eighty eight which was probably uh, four years after Starman. Uh-huh. And The Village of the Dam, which was done in... Oh, part, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Let me see. In, let me see. I'm trying to use my numbers. Let me see. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, about um, nine years later. He's using Roman numerals here. That's why it's getting confused. Yeah, so this was done in 1995 with Christopher Reeves. Our Superman. That's right, yeah, yeah, Chris Reeves, yeah. Before he broke his back and confined uh, uh, himself to yeah, a wheelchair. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Anyway, he had a promising career, that guy. Anyway. Yeah, shame. Uh, now, um, what can I say? Yeah. Uh, uh, right. This is probably, uh uh-huh. reception. There you go. I've got some notes in here. This is what I said before about sci fis and everything. Okay. Uh, Starman grossed $2.8 million in its opening weekend. Not wow. too bad. Debuting uh, at number six. It was released the same week as June. You ever seen June? No. No, it was good. good Never heard of it. Good movie. Uh, and uh, 2010, the year we made contact. Uh, and it's supposed to be other movies at the same time, but that's the same bloody week. Isn't 2010 an, another sci-fi movie? Yeah, the day we the, the, the year we made contact. Oh, I guess. Yeah, that yeah. makes a little sense. And he had two sci-fis, which were more action and real sci-fis, mm. and this is a sci-fi drama, and they probably pulled people away from the seats, which yeah. is a shame. Shame. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, I'll go through a couple of the things here that the reviewer said. Uh-oh. No, no, it's good. They generally positive reviews. Thank you very much for a change. That's a relief. Uh, the Re- Rotten Tomatoes gave an approval rating of 85%. Uh, what initially begins as a sci-fi transforms into a surprisingly sweet offbeat drama, courtesy of John Carpenter's careful direction. Clever. So, Way to go, John. See, so, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a drama. Mm-hmm. And that's where the problem is that it's not a straight sci-fi. Uh, Metacritic gives the film of uh, 71%. With no, I've got no comments what they said. Now, um, Roger Ebert gave the film three stars out of four, and he says um, it contains the potential to be a very silly movie, but the two actors have so much sympathy for their characters that the movie advertises space fiction turns into one of 1984's or touching love stories. Silly. So you know, see, see, mm. drama in a sci-fi environment. So, mm. yeah. um, 
a lot of them are pretty much the same sort of stuff there. Mm. And there's one or two negatives in there, but they're, they're knuckleheads. Right. Um, oh, I'll find one here, I'll find one. What is it? Uh, here's a, here's a knuckle, knucklehead of one, which I think is uh, down the bottom here. Okay. Yeah, da, da, da. Okay, here you go. The review by Time Out, it's uh, obviously a magazine or something or whatever, called it a rather lame sci-fi love story. Oh, brother. We slacks the drive, energy, haha, <laughs> uh, and surprise which one associates with Carpenter. How can the other guys think Carpenter did a great job and this one guy thinks he did a lazy job? I don't oh, know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it continued. The best special effects shown in the first five minutes. Thereafter, it's all rather predictable. Pardon? The, the normally uh, excellent Bridges shuffles his way through a robotic performance. He's supposed to be a bloody alien dickhead. Uh, as though he's just been unplugged. Oh, and the film's very basic gag. His naive, <sighs> naive response to what he experiences wears thin pretty quick. To quote the phrase... Considering he was developing through the movie, mm. I don't know whether this guy actually watched the movie properly. To quote a phrase from Sylvester Stallone... Put me back, back in, in the, the fridge. fridge. Okay. And here's one. Colin Greenland for, uh, from Imagine Magazine said, um, start swell with engaging performances from Karen Allen as a woman trying not to go crazy and Jeff Bridges as a man in the borrowed body. But then director John Carpenter changes his mind and turns it into an irritatingly soft-hearted love story what a waste of a promising idea. Oh, brother. What do you want? The alien to go on a rampage, people? <laughs> but they're the two guys. All the other reviews were positive and said, what a great job John Carpenter oh, did. Boy. What a great movie he did. And how uh, good um, Jeff Bridges did in his acting role. Yeah. But I don't believe every review. Just um, because it, it's an alien movie does not mean it has to be like everything, be everyone else. Star else's. Wars or Battlestar Galactica or oh, Battlefield Earth or something or other. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be something what different. it is. This is a sci fi drama. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, that's what it is. Mm, if, yeah. you, if, if you had a drama today, based in today's world, mm. it is a today world drama. Mm. If you move 100 years in the future and there's a bit of sci-fi stuff thrown in, then it becomes a sci-fi drama. The story is still the same. It doesn't say it's an action movie. It doesn't say it's an adventure movie. It's a sci-fi drama. Mm. So, reviewers, get over it. Yeah, anyway, another thing about this, about Jeff Bridges' performance, he actually modelled it to his head his head movements after, you know, watching a few birds' movements. Yeah, like, because he's getting used to body movements. He, he, just, he, he wasn't used to using yeah. a human body. Yeah, he's, so, he's a ball of energy. Yeah, so he's he kind of did a good job, you know, getting an idea of how an yeah. alien would react to uh, moving his head a lot in a bit of a funny way. Yeah, exactly right. Well, you look at... Um, no, I can't, I can't think of another movie that's similar to a body taking over. Um, I think it would have been Terminator, maybe. Considering that... or uh, No, maybe mm, not Terminator. No, they didn't uh, take over bodies. No, it doesn't matter. Well, it dealt with... Um, um, no, I'm talking about people getting used to a new body. Mm. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, maybe. I, I think I've seen... I have, I have seen some movies over the years where I've got the same sort of thing. Oh, for Virtuosity with Russell Crowe. Mm, when when the guy came out one. of the computer... Mm. And he took over. He, had, he was given a biological body in the real world, and he had to learn about gravity and how to do stuff. And mm. in a short period of time, he got used to things, but it was all new. He was a mm. computer program. Yeah. And so you have to learn how to use a human body first. Mm. But he still had the basics. He had the programming because he used to walk around yeah. stuff mm. in the computer program. Yeah, I'm, I'm hmm. still annoyed by yeah. those reviewers uh, yeah. saying that nasty, those nasty yeah. comments when they and don't. Look, some know. of these guys will not say anything nice. They just want. to... I'm not going to use the word troll, but they, if, if they can't say anything good about something, mm. they'll, they'll bag it. If they yeah. don't like it, it's not their style of movie, they'll bag it. Um, yeah, well, you've got to admit... If the ratings are down in the magazine, they'll bag it. You know, whatever. It's, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Get get a life, you know. Mm, true. Yeah. Yeah. We need more positive affirmations nowadays to say, and I don't hey, mind this it. is great. Yeah. And I don't mind, a, you know, um, a, re a different retelling of 
sci-fi when you think about yeah. it. A, re- a retelling is good. Like a retelling a, is entertaining. Yeah, like if a movie's a bag of crap, it's a bag of crap. But if it's not a bag of crap, don't call it a bag of crap. Right. Yeah. You know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I like the fact this one is more of a romantic it's different. You know, fantasy. Well, or like, look, sci-fi. At, look, look at um, Indiana Jones. Exactly. What is it? It's action more adventure? Action adventure. Does he get a love interest in it? Yep. In just about every movie? Yeah. So, what we have is it a love story or is it an action movie or an adventure movie? Now, to me, it's an adventure movie with some action in it and a bit of love story thrown into it. So, the primary thing here would be. It's a drama sci-fi. Mm. Drama being the main genre, mm. and the second part of the genre is the sci-fi. Now, yeah. so didn't you know, Jones would be action adventure mm. or adventure action, depending which one you put it first. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, and that's it. And lost a little bit of love story. He gets a woman in the end, whatever. It's not really a love story. Mm. But you want to keep throwing them love, love interest in the end. Yeah, well, it depends but, on how much yeah. you use, I yeah, guess, if, you, if that's the word. I didn't overdo it. So I no. mean, no. with um, Indiana Jones, it di- wasn't over. They it didn't wasn't overdo overdone. it with the lovey-dovey stuff. It no. was more to do with um, finding there, the artifact. There, there were a lot of sexual dynamics like in there in between him and his leading ladies, mm-hmm. uh, especially that first one. Um, oh, Lord, Temple of Doom. Mm. Yeah, that one there. No, yeah. no not the not first one, but Temple of Doom. I know one. what you mean, yeah. Mike. You With, said, uh, the blonde lady. I think you said yeah. to me one time that yeah. Temple of Doom, it was originally going to be the first of the um, yeah. well, Indiana Jones yeah. franchise, but then it was they moved, moved it, around. Yeah. Uh, that, that girl, that blonde lady who married Spielberg. Uh, um, that would have been. I can't, remember, I can't remember her name either. But yeah, the dynamics between those two guys through the whole movie was fun. And it's magic, and that, yeah, you know, you knew they're going to sort of end up together in the end. But you know, yeah, I'm love, kind of, hate, love mm. hate, love hate, love hate, love hate. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's all the way through. It was really fun. Yeah, uh, but, I am but kind but of. It wasn't a love story. Yeah, yeah. and I am kind of glad that in Raiders of the Lost Ark, I like Raiders and Lost Ark, and I like the Last Crusades. They're two of my favorite versions of Indiana Jones yeah. out there. I like the Temple of Doom. I, I, I like Inside the Mine and you know, that. Uh, they're trying to get away from the bad guys and everything starts and bridges start falling apart and, yeah. and stuff. And I even found yeah. out something interesting. Yeah. When they did the Indiana, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, um, I know I'm getting away ahead of myself, but in the, when they had an older actor playing the young Indi- the older Indiana Jones, um, okay. and yeah. they got they kind of recut the, um, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles yeah. just because... After they did the fourth one, it confirmed that um, older Indiana Jones didn't have an eye patch. Don't uh, ask me why, but that's um, the um, actually speaking of in, about Indiana and Jones and the fact that also oh, that Indy's um, grand his daughter was not going to be in the yeah. franchise, so yeah. they had to change it to a um, they had to cut that bit out yeah. and and make yeah. out that he had a son but instead. Speaking of Indiana Jones. I'm annoyed. I'm waiting for the next instalment in the Indiana yeah. Jones movies. Yeah. And what the hell are they doing? Chris Pratt is there waiting for it. Nah. He would be ideal to take up the, the take up the baton and run with it. He got the looks, he got the personality, he's been in action mm. type movies, you know, Jurassic World and different things and Yeah. He, and he has the yeah. running away part down to a T. I've got a funny <laughs> feeling about this or yeah, that's, yeah, I think he can get away with that line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I go admit though, I think I do feel bad for dear old Harrison when he was in U- Europe at that at, when he was in Europe. I feel oh, sorry. Oh, whatever. Get over it. I'm sorry. I just I feel sorry <sighs> for him. He, he was being pestered by um, by the people in England when they don't realise that maybe he's put under a lot of pressure working was, hard. Yeah. And he's also get, he's getting old and he could be tired and everything else. And, it's, know, no one ever thinks that yeah. actors are humans. Yeah. They're not they're not machines. They're they people exactly think of right. them as machines. They're not no. living, breathing human beings. They have yeah. no emotions. But well, they do. They, they do and have and emotions, they tired, and they get tired. They get, worn they get worn out. They get exactly right. stress. Yeah, they do. Stuff like that. And you can't keep hounding them all the time. But no, forget about it. But yeah, mm. they need someone needs to write a script. Say hey, Chris Pratt, are you available? Bring me in there and make a good story. Well, they probably movie. want to um, finish. Um, do a fun. I think the fifth one they're thinking of. They're probably it's going to be probably the final send off for the franchise. Well, who's going to be in it? 
Aha. Uh-huh. I just mean that yeah. this is like sa- a saying goodbye to Indiana Jones film franchise, if that's the word for it. I think that's yeah, the plan for this sure, um, final yeah, one. I'm uh-huh. not sure. I just hope that it will be d- a better version than the fourth one. Well, and the f- fourth one, Crystal Skulls, yeah. That was that sounds getting more into sci-fi realms. And yeah. The, see, where the other ones are based on real ar- archaeology and the Crystal hope, Skulls weren't real archaeology. I do They'll hope, prove to be fake. I do They'll hope, prove to be fake. I do hope the actress, Marion... And Matt will reappear in this one. I don't want to see them breaking up like 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 Han and Leia were. No, yeah, but they can jump. They can jump a decade or two or something, and they, yeah, they, they don't. Have, they don't have to be in it. I know, but, but anyway, that I would like to see that. Matter. I don't anyway. like it when couples break up, were married or otherwise. Well, he, he wasn't married to her. Yes, he was. He's oh, oh he the married. Fourth, the, oh, that's right. You're on the end of the movie. Way yeah, you got the married. The yeah, yeah, that's right. Which I often thought was a key point that this was the end of the in the uh, of that's Indiana right. he, Jones he got area. Married, you're gonna settle down and get another dog, and, 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 and instead of calling him Indiana, you're gonna call him Wisconsin. Nope. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, but you know what I mean, uh, Mike. That I would have thought. I would have thought that the Indi- young, the Indiana Jones fourth movie would be the end of an era because yeah. that well, would indicate that, that that Indy is ready to settle down, be a father and a husband to Marion. Well, he was ready for but, that. But Marion, hint, hint. Marion, or Marion, or whatever, uh, Marion, um, were um, they could have gone and done an adventure together. Maybe. I, uh-huh. I just think it's crossed that they'll they'll come together and, well, and do be, this. They'll be have to get them out of the retirement home soon. <laughs> I mean, if they, if they wait too much longer, they was like, let's go to the graveyard. We'll dig them up. We'll shove them in there, and you know, a bit of makeup. We'll touch them up. Not a problem. But I yeah. think that the, some of the original. I think um, Sar may come back for this one. Um, Sala. Sala may come back. Okay. The actor, I mean. Yeah, John Reese Davies were. Yeah, he may be coming yeah, back. Yeah, no, I, I like I like him. He's he's good. I'm. I like him as a dwarf, and I like him as a big, big fellow. Okay, well. we're drifting apart again <laughs> off this pro- movie again. Sorry, no, guys. we're not. We're just have, we're having a bit of a banter, aren't we, folks? Yeah. So, how do you want to rate this? Oh, look, I like Star this Wars bit. movie. Look, I mean, no, a Star, Star Man Star movie. Wars, Star Man, not Star Wars. Yeah. Although one day we'll probably review we that. Might do a Star Wars movie, but there's too many of them. Um, well, we'll review our f- the originals uh, one we'll day. We'll do the originals for somehow in, in a lump. Maybe. Yeah. Um, anyway, what I'm going to say is... Go on. This is a drama to me. It's not strict sci-fi. Now, as a drama, I think it holds its own reasonable well. And as a sci-fi, it's really wonderful. It's, it, look, it's got, it got enough sci-fi in it to make it a sci-fi as well. Uh, a bit like uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind had the same sort of thing. Um, but to me, it's more of a drama. And as a drama, I think the storyline holds up reasonably well. Yeah, and, I, and despite what some of the reviewers said, I think the two main actors, uh, Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen, carry the roles quite nicely. Yeah, ri- originally yeah. I think I read somewhere that... Uh, let me see, what was it? I read somewhere that Kevin Bacon and Tom Cruise were considered for the Starman roles. You know what, I don't think Cruise could have done it. I'm, and I'm not knocking Tom Cruise. He's more of an action hero type guy with all the Mission Impossible stars and everything else. Mm. This is not that sort of movie. Yeah, I can't, um, I can't yeah. picture even Bacon, Kevin Bacon, maybe. maybe. Bacon. He, 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 I don't no, know what he was like back no, then. He's not, like, he's not an action hero guy. He might have been able to do it. Mm. But see, Jeff Bridges has got something some of the guys don't have. Yeah, something there is really interesting. No, no, you don't. What, do you, what is it? I don't know. It's he, he's just, comfortable and yeah. natural. He, doesn't, he, just, he just slides into a role. Hmm. And, he, and, and so, and that's how yeah. he, it, when he gets into a role, whether it's in Tron or this or some of the other movies he's been in. Yeah, I, I gotta um, admit, I, I don't think I could see Tom Cruise in that role either. No, he couldn't have done it. it. It's a wrong, different style of acting. Uh, I mean, people say, "Oh, yes, but a good actor can change." But, but look, if, John, if Tom Cruise is comfortable doing action heroes uh, movies like *Miss Impossible* and all the other crap, yeah, um, well. That's just what he he, he uh, excels at, yeah. uh, and it, to me, it'd be a compromise to himself mm. doing a movie which isn't an action hero job. Yes. Yep. So, yep. so, should we rate this movie now? I'm going to give it a nine. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not being nasty. Uh, I think they could have done a bit more with it. Mm. Um, I would give it um, ten out of ten. Yeah. Because yeah. I do think mm. it's some. There's something. Well, it's a good movie. John Carpenter did a good job, but I mean, yeah. they, they, I think they could have actually worked a bit more on the storyline to make it a tad more interesting, mm. which would have brought 
maybe some more um, people. Remember from the science fiction part of it? Mm. They could have brought a little bit more in, which could have actually made a slightly better movie. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I still, I'm still not going to... I've rewatched. Oh, I've movie. watched yeah. the TV series and I'm not too impressed with their work Oh, by the way, folks. Either. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you give them 10. I'm giving nine. And by the way, if you are interested, mm. okay, you can buy them on uh, eBay. Plenty there. Uh, mm. And on Amazon... Uh, there's plenty there to buy, well, quite a few, uh, but it's also rentable through Prime. Uh, if you want to have a, yes, have a look through Prime, it's a good look. and It's a good, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say fun movie because it's a drama, but it's a good It's a good watch. It's interesting. And it's funny and it's sometimes. Done well. It's the funny bits in it. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's a, like drama, melodrama, and a bit of sci-fi. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a good tell. It's, yeah. a good, it's, a good, it's a good watch. I think that John and the writers had a good, idea, good fun time with writing the script. I mean, when you think about it, guys, if, say, you're an alien and you arrive on an unknown planet of sorts and then you don't know how to react to yeah. um, all the differences in yeah. this world. Imagine you going to another planet. Ah. It's just like if you if you came from another country and you don't know how to speak the language really well or you know all a little customs. bit of the language yeah. but not the customs yeah. too much. Yeah. Things so yeah, like that. So same sort of thing. So you, you, you can identify off the alien. Anyway, irrespective. It's, oh, I think that's where. I said it once. It's. I think that's where most people in sci-fi get their ideas for aliens yeah. because they encounter people who probably are not familiar with country. Their different countries' habits, and yeah. then they use those to put into the story. When you think about that's it, exactly right. I think that's how most sci-fi's came up with um, why um, it's hard to adapt as an alien into an, in another environment when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, like moving from one country to the next, like going from uh, a Western country like America, England, Australia, mm. New Zealand, and going to live in, say, the Middle East in a war-torn, a war-torn country. Mm. Total different culture. Everything's yeah. different. You have to watch what you do, watch what you say, different food, blah, blah, blah. You have to learn as you go along. You have to learn the language. Yeah, so there's lots of different things. A big change. Yeah, yeah big change. Mm. Anyway, guys, I'm finished. Yes, me too. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I and, did. And I do hope you may check out our, our previous reviews. We've only done a hundred and something or other. Mm. <laughs> Quite a few. Anyway, I am. Um, I do hope you guys enjoy them, and just be sure to send your comments to to on my below as much as you can, because I would like to hear as many comments and yeah, feedback a, is nice. If you think we're doing good, tell us we're doing good. Or if you if you want to suggest, hey, can you review this movie? I've heard about that one. Hmm. Blah blah. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. I got I got a yeah. um, uh, a message the other day from uh, one of our fans asking yeah. us to review a movie, but I'll. I'll I'll get back to you to that very person very soon. I just have is it be... is a possibility? Is it? It's a possibility. Oh good. I'll, I'll just let you keep you guys informed on my progress. Mm. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, so guys. I'll see you guys for my next podcast episode. So uh, this is Sarah Stevenson and Michael saying we'll see you guys for the next one. Bye for now. Bye, guys. <laughs>